This project was created for Makers Creative Collab June version, which was Collect and Create. I created this recipe book. If you want to just see the flip through, I'll link it in the description below. This is a process video on how I put this book together from a composition book. My name is Nick. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you will hit that subscribe button and join me as I explore this mixed media world and create different things kind of all over the place. And if you like that, please hit the subscribe button. The notification bell will let you know when I upload content. So to get started, I counted all the pages in this book. There's actually 99 pages in the composition books. It measures nine and three quarters inch in height, seven and a half inches in width. So I'm going to divide these 99 pages into five sections. That gives me four sections of 20 pages and one section of 19. Let's get started with the dividers. So I am cutting a piece of cardstock down <clears throat> slightly wider than my width so I can make the dividers. To make those dividers, I scored at 5 eighths of an inch, and I divided that height into 5 and just cut my tabs along that 5 eighths inch marked line. And now I'm going to hit them with um, my cropping tool and round those corners where I could, where I couldn't. I'm just using scissors. Now I'll get all these tabs sorted out. I chose to fold that 5 8 inch width over to provide more strength. So now we have the five dividers created. I want to use some aluminum to create a book plate. I will be embossing the aluminum with my embossing folder. Just cutting out this thin aluminum to the size of my embossing folder. So I've just measured it. Now I'm going to score it and just cut around it. This is a, a hobby aluminum. You can pick it up in any of the big box stores. I think I paid $5.99 for this entire roll. I define that size. Make sure my edges are square. and stick that inside the embossing folder. I'm going to go roll that through my Big Shot. And now I have an embossed piece of aluminum. I'm rounding off the corners with my crocodile, and that will look nice. Setting atop the composition book. I'm using alcohol ink to color it, and I'm just dropping some pink down to get a background, and then going to go ahead, take a cosmetic sponge and just spread that throughout. <clears throat> I'm not real familiar with alcohol inks, kind of experimenting here. Now that I have that pink background, I'm just dropping in some blues. And I'm just going to let that run and kind of find its own path around those embossed flowers. I'm going to let that dry. And once all of that alcohol ink is dry and everything is dry to the touch, I am utilizing the foundry wax, the Tim Holtz foundry wax, to come back in and define the flowers. And I used the sterling in the foundry wax. I'm just spreading that with my fingers and heat setting it with a heat tool. And once cooled down, I have a Sharpie that I am going around the flowers just to give them some additional definition and shadow.
And this will just about complete this book plate. I do want to come back and give it just a few extra touches. But once I get the outline around these flowers, we'll drill, use the, the craft pick and poke some holes. in the four corners of this book plate so we can define where, not define where, but push some brands through and give us a, an opportunity to adhere it with the, by connecting it to the front cover with the brand. So I'm just using that craft pick to poke the holes through and to grab some brads and just go ahead and put them through those holes. And the one thing you want to remember when you do this, which I didn't, and, and I'll tell you how I solved that problem, but before you put your cover sheet on your inside front, remember to poke your, go ahead and adhere your book play to the book. I forgot to do that. So I wound up cutting the tail of my brads off, gluing my book plate down, and then gluing my, my little brads in place. So they're kind of a fake connection on my finished piece. Now we want to create the divider. So I started with some cerulean blue, a little bit of silver. I'm going to allow that to dry on my plate. That's going to be my kind of base color. And now I'm coming back in with a purple, going over the top of that dried cerulean blue and silver and giving it some definition with this stencil. And I'm pulling some of the color and marking some of the color with that bubble wrap. And I've laid down a mask of torn paper and I'm placing my cardstock down on that with the tab, and there is our divider. So that's how I did each and every divider. I used that mask to give me a spot to define what section this was. Now I'm just stamping it with the alphabet stamps, and I use a heavy hand with these stamps because I like the little box around the letter and kind of the sparse placement of the ink. That's up to you. But now we have the dividers in a randomly stamped way. And I am going around the outside edge with the black, coming back in and putting just a slit hole in each of the dividers so I can pull some ribbon through those. And I decided I went into a little more on these dividers and came back in with a, a little boho stamp and just stamped some additional black in there. In retrospect, I, think, I wish I would have left it kind of plain, but here we are. So there are the dividers completed. I'm just going in with my gold pen, giving it some splatters, and I lined each of that mashed area with a little bit of a rough random gold line. And now to create the cover for the book, I'm utilizing the same color, that cerulean blue, and I've pulled in some rice paper. I'm just going to lay that down and I'm creating the cover very similar to this, the way I created the dividers. 
going to get two sheets with a base color of that blue laid down. And there we have our background. I think that book cover plate will look nice on that. I'm going to give the, now that that's all dry, I'm going to give it a little gold splatter and some, the center of the flowers. Let's trim that up. And I just want to make sure I have enough overlap on either side to, to wrap this composition book. But on the outside front cover, I need that blue to go right to the edge because that's going to be placed up against that black binding. So we're wrapping on three sides. Pulling out the Yes paste to get a nice thin coat of glue all over that front cover. Lay that rice paper down. And I like this Yes paste because it has some for forgiveness and you can get things positioned before it dries. I'm going to let that dry and then turn it over and fold these corners in. Fold the, just wrap it like a package. But that's the beauty of this rice paper. It's nice and thin, and you don't have to do a lot of trimming and cutting of the paper to get a nice wrap. So we'll get that down. And now would be the time to put the, put the book plate on and poke the holes through the cover before you put in the front cover in sheet. Writing over the top of this blue with the gold pen, and I'm Utilizing the Asimic writing, and in my head, I'm thinking recipes, what I'm going to do with the recipes, and just writing those words out illegibly across my front cover. And I went to splatter along that black spine to give the book some cohesiveness. And now, before I put my end sheets in, I want to take that area of that rice paper that remained white and put some color there. So I'm just painting it with a paintbrush, a little bit of the purple. I didn't create my end sheets when I was doing all that gel press printing before, so now it's time to come back and add some more purple to the gel plate and define the end sheets on how they're going to look when you open that book. So I started with the purple. I'm going to lay down the stencil that I utilized on the dividers, pull some of that ink out with this bubble wrap, and give where the ink was left, some of that bubble wrap definition. We'll lay the piece I have cut, piece of cardstock I have cut for the end sheet down. And there we have a very nice background for the inside. Let's just get this done once again so that we have two, one for the inside front cover and one for the inside back. Once again, pulling up some of that paint with the bubble wrap and we'll lay this second in sheet down and get our background defined. So there are our two 
in sheets. I clean off the extra ink here on the gel press. And I'm going to come back in with some gold. As I've been splattering the gold all over. And I think I'll utilize this uh, floral stencil and just lay that down, mask off some of that area. And put my in sheet over the top. And there, we have a nice little in sheet print to go inside the front cover and the back. Let's get the second one complete. And now I think we have two in sheets completed and we're ready to put those on our inside front and inside back cover. I'm going to just tuck those in, make sure the measurements are correct. It looks like I might need to trim that down just a slight bit. Because I want to <clears throat> make sure it fits but doesn't overlap the outside edge, of course. So let's just take just a smidge, if that's a proper measurement, off of <clears throat> that prior to putting it on the inside front and the inside back. Just add some yes paste to the back of it and we'll get that glued down. Now once again, this is where you would put your book plate on, but I forget to do it so I will go back and glue my book plate on with yes paste and I like I said before, I trimmed the tails off of those brads and just glued them into place with some glitter glue. Let's get the inside back into place. And there, the front and back cover are now completely covered with paint. And I went ahead and Put the yes paste on that but i had forgotten to paint around the outside edges here so i'm just coming back and doing that now and one way to avoid this step would be just to make sure your paint is covered more on your rice paper when you lay your gel press down when you're kind of running projects on the fly you don't really think that far ahead. To decorate these tabs, I strung some sari silk through each one, just a small piece of sari silk. I created little black tabs with my die cut, and I am tying those tabs on with a single um, piece of gold thread. So we have the sari silk, the gold thread, and the black tab. Each tab is written with the name of the divider and now I'm ready to lay recipes in so just dividing those up and determining what I'm going to have in each section and it is your choice on how you want to decorate each page and lay those recipes into place. I hope this was helpful or gave you the process on how to get the dividers in <clears throat> and decorate your book plate it with the aluminum and put together this simple, easy, inexpensive way to store the recipes that you clip out of magazines. You can add your diagonal pocket on the front to store the ones that you haven't put down. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for stopping by. If you would, please subscribe to my channel and I've put an additional playlist here for you to take a look at if you have time. Appreciate you being here. Bye for now.